Hey, Dr. Tyler Williams at Pinecrest Practice Growth and excited to share this video with you on a topic that many people are searching for, many practice owners are asking about, which is social media for your dental practice. Social media is such a broadly used term and when you think about social media, you know, you have the common ones, Facebook, Instagram, um, that a lot of practices are using and that we all think of when we think of social media. Uh, you have, you know, TikTok, which is up and coming, um, YouTube. You also have things like LinkedIn, which aren't as commonly used for uh, dental practices, specifically for, you know, getting new patients and, and finding patients. It's a little more used for professionals and recruiting, but, you know, may have some application. But social media also includes things like Google reviews and Google Maps and Apple Maps and um, Yelp and, and some of the directory listings where your patients may be using them to chat or post a question or find you and give a rating. And often we don't think about that when we're talking about social media. So the temptation that a lot of practice owners run into when we discuss this is thinking that social media is free, you know, Facebook's free <clears throat> and it's not free. In fact, you know, you can spend a lot of money on Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, Bing ads, Yahoo ads. You can also spend a lot of time. So when you're thinking about Facebook, you're kind of targeting two groups. You're targeting your internal market, which is your patients and their families and friends. You're also targeting your external market, which are people who don't know about you yet or maybe they've driven by and seen your sign or your building and uh, kind of wondered what's inside, but they haven't actually come out and met you um, or, or raised their hand to ask a question. So when you're using social media, for example, you'd want to think about, okay, well, if you have someone in your office posting content and sharing some pictures of patients or success stories or maybe something fun or a giveaway, how much time are they spending doing that and what's the return? So. Typically, um, when we're doing our return on investment, our ROI on marketing, we're looking for a minimum of 13 to one return. And, uh, you know, as we've gotten better at this, we've ratcheted that up to where we're aiming for a 16 or 17 to one return on investment. And I'll explain how we're coming up with that number in just a minute. First, you wanna think about your marketing as an investment, not a cost, not an expense because the marketing is what puts fuel in the machine which is your practice to propel it forward now some practice owners and you may be thinking the same thing as well hey i don't like doing ads you know i think they're cheesy i think they're high pressure they're not my style but then if that's the case then essentially your marketing is hey we're by referral only or hey we're the local guy or um you know we we are a practice that serves and treats our patients well, and we know that they refer others like them. Um, <clears throat> that being said, you know, everything in your practice is marketing. So that includes, you know, your restrooms being clean regularly, the amenities you offer your patients, uh, comfort items, you know, do you have bottles of water? Do you have nice fragrances in your office or does it smell like an old dental office? All those things are marketing because those are what are gonna tell your patients what kind of atmosphere you're producing, and it's also gonna highly impact who you're gonna attract. If you have a new, updated, clean office, you're gonna attract people who are looking for a progressive, newer, modern dental practice. If you have a practice that has old carpet and old paint on the walls and old furniture, you're probably gonna attract people who are looking for the cheap or low-cost dentist because they can tell you don't ever upgrade anything and that you're cheap, and that's gonna match you with the type of market who is looking for you. Now, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you accept that and know what it is. But if you're looking to be more progressive and have an updated office, then I would caution you to be careful of things like you know signing up with too many insurance plans. Um, we talk about this a lot on the Practice X Factor podcast, which is uh, helping practices um, especially startup practices or growing practices, uh, implement a membership plan in their office and imp implement a really great membership plan 
because a lot of offices have membership plans, but a lot, unfortunately, are not doing it well, and they're making it just sound like a ripoff of insurance, and, and you want to stay completely away from that. So <clears throat> when you're building an office and growing it, be careful of what insurance plans you take. Be sure you know the math, because if you don't, you'll get burned, and, you know, bigger in size does not mean more profitable. And, you know, I've learned that the hard way um, through ups and downs. And we've also learned that, you know, when we've restructured things and really thought about when and why we do things the way we do <clears throat> and the services we offer, you may think differently about those. So you may want to look at dropping some of the lowest paying plans. You may want to look at dropping some of your lowest um, profit services. So if there's a service you offer that has a high overhead and you have a really slim, slim margin of profit, you may want to taper, taper back or get rid of some of those services and drop the bottom 10. You know, when you look at um, successful sports teams, they're going to drop the bottom 10% or 20% of their players each year or move the ones who maybe are paid more than they're worth off their payroll onto another team. You wanna do the same thing with team members. You wanna do the same thing with services. You wanna do the same thing with equipment that's sitting there not being used. And you wanna do the same thing with um, marketing sources and the same thing with insurance plans. So the 13 to one, how we figure that out is we say for every dollar we put into the machine, which is our practice, we wanna get 13 out. We take uh, a monthly budget. So if your practice, for example, was um, producing $13,000 a month, just to make the math simple, that would mean you were spending $1,000 on marketing. So <clears throat> 1,000 in, you get 13,000 out. Now that 1,000 can include postcards, it can include your website, it can include updates to your signage outside, it can include the, the you know program you use to send emails to patients, it can include your text messaging program. We consider all those things marketing because we're using them to promote the practice and remind people about us. It does not mean we're always running ads on those things, but it means we're providing some value and some interest to patients. As we've gotten better at this, we've ratcheted that up higher to where we wanna get a 16 or 17 to one return on investment. So we take the total collections for the month. So if your total collections was 13,000 in this example, but you were spending 2000 on all those things, okay? Now you'd be at a six and a half to one return on investment. That's gonna be way too low because when you take that 13,000 and you subtract out payroll, taxes, rent, expenses, lab, dental supplies, all those kind of things, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna be in the negative. So starting out, if you're just starting out a practice, okay, you may be in the negative for some time and that's why you need some money to invest in your practice initially you can get a very good return. Once you get some momentum and sus some sustainability, then you can start looking closer at dialing in which marketing sources are the best. So often your internal is gonna be some of your least expensive, most profitable, all right? So for example, if you do a patient giveaway that requires you give out some cards and maybe buy a TV or something you give away for a referral contest, or patients who join your membership plan or a charity you're part of, and you promote that to every patient who comes in and you make it fun and exciting, that might cost you several hundred dollars, um, including you know the amount of time your team spends to talk about it. And if that generates just a small handful of new patients, that can really go a long way for you. Another thing we would recommend is that you become involved in your community this would be considered grassroots marketing. It can be very low, uh, low cost from a you know, hard cost standpoint, but it does require someone to be involved in the community, whether that's you or a member of your team or probably some hybrid of both. Um, but the cool thing about it is you can do some really, really great things. So <clears throat> one of the ways we suggest doing this is uh, you know, if you're active on social media, which is fine, and if you're not, that's okay too, as long as you have you know, some other strategies in place. But if you do have a Facebook and Instagram account for your practice, you need to be updating those regularly. 
uh, a, a social media account that hasn't been updated for some time can actually be more damaging and more detrimental than not having one at all. You know, if you have a Facebook page and no one's posted anything on there for four years and all of a sudden, uh, you know, a patient gets upset and they slam you with a one-star review on Facebook and that's the only post you've had in four years, that's gonna scare a lot of patients off because people do stalk you, they do research you. When people show up to your office now, they're more informed than ever and they often already know what they want. And so you have to think through what their journey is like and always record the lead source of how patients find you. Most practice management softwares have a feature that allows you to you know, tag that or attach somehow how the patient found you. <clears throat> and then you should run a report each month and look at your top five and top 10 lead sources and figure out how to maximize those. Look at the bottom ones and decide if those need to be dumped or changed or improved. Sometimes a lower performing marketing source could just be adjusted. You know, sometimes <clears throat> the lowest one could be uh, patient referrals. You know, the money you're spending on patient giveaways and contests, but you obviously aren't gonna stop doing that because that is one of the funnest ways to promote within the walls of your practice, the people who are already a captive audience, people who are already listening to your message Otherwise, they wouldn't be there. And then you can work backwards. So um, a, a cool strategy we have, and there's two parts to this, and I'll share the first one with you, um, is you uh, get involved <clears throat> on social media and you start providing relevant content to people in your community and your neighborhood. And you, you, know, you may post uh, something helpful, <clears throat> something that your patients would like, uh, or just something that's valuable to the community. Don't go promoting your practice. Don't just put a bunch of posts on there. Hey, come to XYZ Family Dental. We love our patients. Okay, if you do that, people are going to lose trust and have less credibility because they're not gonna see you as uh, someone who's the authentic. They're gonna see you as someone who's trying to promote their business. So what you wanna do is provide some valuable content to your community, be a part of the community, and share some things of value, and um, you you really start to get some people who are you know see you for who you are, and they want to come see you for what they know about you, not because you do dental work. People who come to see you just because you do dental work are usually the least committed, least loyal, hardest to satisfy patients. People who come to see you because of who you are, or who's who uh, has referred to you or you know videos they've watched or things they learned about your practice before they set foot inside those are usually patients with a higher dental IQ and they typically become some of your best dental patients so when you think about you know utilizing social media think about uh, you know using your Facebook to leverage your network and connection to your community and this is a seed planning process okay it's not just going to bring in a flood of new patients okay but as you start to participate maybe in a local community um, Facebook group and you occasionally post things on there or have someone in your office do it you'll start to see that people ask start asking you questions you know and it opens the door up and invites some participation the second part of this is how to really accelerate that and um, we have a, a program that we offer. And uh, you know, if you reach out to us or if you click on our website below, we can share more with you on how to make that happen. And um, it's, it's a pretty cool trick. Um, it takes a little bit of work to set up, but once you set it up, it's very, very low cost to run. And uh, it can often be much better than just you know posting a picture or a cat video to your practice Facebook page occasionally and hoping that some magic comes out of it. Um, so we appreciate you taking some time to watch this video. If you'd like to learn more, um, you can shoot us a message. Um, we do have some consultations available that are no obligation and um, you can reach out and uh, we have a few more spots remaining this month. Be happy to talk with you and see if you know, this program would be a good fit for you and something that could help grow your practice. Um, and, uh, you know, just this month, we have a, a $7 introductory offer where you can get this cool Facebook program, learn how to implement it, and get the tools you need and 
find out how that will benefit your practice. So thanks for taking a minute to watch this video and we look forward to your questions and feedback and hearing about your social media connections to make your practice grow.